Hello, Internet! I'm Elliot the Purple Doofus, and welcome to Buddy Read, where I read a small selection of a book and review it for you. Today, we are covering the third quarter of The Wind Through the Keyhole by Stephen King. I'd say I'm up to page two, 231, but that probably means nothing to you, considering this is the first edition, and I don't know if the page numbers are the same. I apologize for that, but I really hope I don't ruin anything for you, and I really hope that you've read past what I'm about to cover. We have Tim, the boy in this fairy tale that Roland is telling the little boy, in the story that he's telling the pilgrims to help them sleep. And Tim, Tim's stepfather has just beaten the crap out of his mother. And Tim is watching this through a magic mirror, I guess, in this sorcerer's pot. And he goes, oh no, I have to be to her, I have to go to her. And the sorcerer is like, yes, you must go to her. For it is your fault that he is beating her because you stole the coin that was in Kellis's treasure box thing. And Tim's like, but you gave me the key. <laughs> and he's like, yes, yes I did. <laughs> I told you how much I hate this story. Anyways, Tim goes running to his mother, and his mother is bloody and beaten, and it's just kind of like, ugh, awkward. And his mother is actually blind from the beating that she got from Kells. Kells is nowhere to be seen. He has run off. Tim actually asks the workers around his town if they have seen him because he's looking for him because he beat the crap out of his mother. And when he explains that to the workers, they're like, no, we haven't seen him, but we're going to look for him now because no guy gets away with that crap. So they scour the woods looking for Kells, and they come back with something for Tim. They come back with a little something for Tim. It's the body of his father... And Tim never thought he would see the body of his father, because everyone had always told him that his father was killed by a dragon. And to be killed by a dragon in this world is to practically disintegrate by fire. So, coming back with an actual physical body proves that his father wasn't killed by a dragon like he had thought his entire life. Tim actually surmises this earlier when he finds the coin. That was in Kellis's treasure box, and he says, Hey, this coin shouldn't have survived that fire. It's not even scorched or scarred or anything. Why do I have it? In Tim C's body, there's a funeral, and the mother says, Please go for both of us. I don't have the energy after getting the life beaten out of me. And Tim says, Of course I will. I love you, mother. And he goes, and he does the sigil, sits Shaba, you know, has a funeral for his dead father. And the whole community is like, Oh, oh, oh you're... We love you, Tim. We hope that this doesn't ruin you, Tim. We are so sorry, Tim. And Tim is like, whatever, I just want to find Kellis right now. Kellis is actually nowhere to be found, and good for him. But Tim goes back to where the taxman slash wizard slash black magic man was to try and use the pot to see where Kellis is. The tax man isn't there, but all of the stuff that he used to show him his vision was. And so Tim fills up the pot, and he starts thinking, oh, maybe this stuff isn't magic, but maybe this wand is. And this wand is actually like a gear shift from, I believe it was a Dodge vehicle. And he waves it over the pot and, you know, says the only magic words that he wants, that he really knows, and he just wills this thing to show him something. And he puts it over the pot, and he sees himself in the pot. He sees himself going to this person known as Merlin. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Merlin gives him a rag, and he shows him to put it over his eyes. And Tim is like, oh, what's that? That's weird. And then he waves the wand over the pot again, and it shows him going to his mother and putting the rag over her eyes. And then removing the rag and, Lord Jesus, she can see again. And then he waves the wand again and nothing. So now Tim has a new quest. And it's not to find Kellis, it's to find this Merlin person so that he can fix his mother's sight. He goes to his teacher 
And he says, can you pass a message on to my mother? Tell her that I have gone into the deep, deep woods to find Merlin so that I can restore her sight. And his teacher's like, don't find Merlin. Merlin is full of dark magic and will end you. But if you're going to find, go find Merlin like we all know that you are, because you are the protagonist of this story, here, have bread and a gun. Tim takes what she gives her, and completely ignores her warnings and goes off into the woods, like any character does in a fairy tale. He goes off into the woods, and he sees a fairy in the woods. And the fairy leads him deeper into the woods. One of the main things that his teacher had been trying to tell him was, magic is a lie! And he finds that out the hard way when the fairy takes him out into a river and strands him on a dragon's head. I'm not kidding. There was a dragon, and he was on his head. Eventually, Tim calms the dragon down and jumps off to this rock where he is stranded because the river is going by, and he can't jump to any other rocks, and it's basically the island of Tim. And, well, he is there for a while. There are other creatures that climb up, and he's like, Go away! And the things just kind of run away, and he is hoping for help, hoping for someone to come help him when... A boat arrives, and this boat is full of natives of the forest area. And they don't speak English, but they can understand him. And he says, I would like to get off this rock. And they're like, okay, of course. And they help him off the rock, and they kind of motion, and they talk to him with charades. They ask him what what he wants. He says, do you know this man named Merlin? And they start charading like a giant hat and a beard. And he's like, yes, that, that guy. Do you know him? Can you take me to him? At first, he wants to ask to go home, but he can't go home because to go home empty-handed would be to worry his mother for nothing. So he asks to go to Merlin. And the people take him as far as they can. As he is going along, he is learning about these people. And he learns that these people can read his mind. And that's how that they can understand him, not because of what he's saying, but because of what he is thinking. And he also learns that these people believe that they are about to die soon. And these people give him a compass. He uses this compass and it has a voice activation mode. And there is this female voice that is guiding him along his way. It's actually quite funny when the female voice appears because he's like out in the wilderness around nothing at all. And all of a sudden the voice is like, hello, traveler. And he's like, ah! He runs away from it. He's walking through the woods and he comes across this site of Billy Bumblers, animals like Oi, and they are all kind of circled around and they're all kind of staring up at the moon and they're, they seem to be performing a ritual even though they're animals. And the voice activated compass is like, this is bad. Not the voice activated compass. This is when he remembers the, the tribe telling him about Billy Bumblers. Or was it the tribe? He remembers someone telling him about B- Billy Bumblers and when they do this, this means that a storm is approaching. And well, He sees them doing this, and he sees a lot of them doing this, so he's like, oh no, a storm. And the storm is supposedly so bad that it gets so cold that it actually freezes people to death. So he's like, oh, I better find cover. And he's like, oh, wait, maybe this is why the tribe thinks they're going to die. Maybe if I complete my quest and get this compass back to them, it will help them not to die. The compass guides him even farther, and they get to a bridge that's rickety, and Tim is like, I don't want to cross that bridge. The compass says, you have to cross that bridge or you are going to die. I suggest that you do it quickly because you are going to die. Did I mention that you are going to die? Do it quickly. Do it quickly. Do it now. Do it now. Tim is like, ah. And he's like slowly walking across and the compass is like, I suggest you make haste. And while he's crossing this bridge, these large tentacles are coming up and trying to swallow him. And it's like, ah. And he's like running across the bridge and he gets finally to the other side where there's a waterfall and a tower. And he starts climbing the tower to the top where there is a beacon. And that is pretty much where the section ends. In my next video, we finish this bitch. And honestly, I really don't care about this fairy tale at all. I really want to get back to the whole murder mystery thing. This fairy tale is very, very boring. <laughs> but... I'm almost done. So we will finish this bitch and be done with the Dark Tower and I can move on to other things. <sighs> if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you like this video specifically, go ahead and click the like button and go ahead and leave a comment letting me know what you think of the fairy tale so far. Because <sighs> no. I've been Alec the Purple Alert Diffus. This has been Buddy Reads, reminding you to watch the Pajam Radius and I will see you all in the final section of 
The Wind Through the Keyhole by Stephen King. <laughs> Toodles! <laughs>